Welcome and congratulations on getting the Dexcom G7 Continuous Glucose Monitor. Now, today what I want to do is I want to walk you through setting up this CGM. I'll walk you through the insertion process and we'll talk about what the over patch is and how to properly apply it. Then we'll wrap it all up by showing you an exciting discovery that I made about the Bluetooth Triangle. We'll talk about it in a bit. Let's get started. First, you want to grab your supplies, and if you haven't done so yet, wash those grubby hands. Be sure to grab your Dexcom G7 applicator. It looks like a pod inside of a small box like this. this. If you got the starter kit, make sure that you remove your receiver and all of the papers and books included. You're looking for this thing here. Or grab yourself the smartphone. It's going to work on either Apple or Android. Make sure that they're charged and turned on so that you don't have any interruptions during this process. Okay, step one, this is a brief overview. Now, real quickly, if you have the starter kit, this one, and intend to use this device, just know that this is a Bluetooth only device. And though it will speak to your sensor to receive your glucose readings, it is unable to share this information with your family members or your endocrinologist unless you take it with you to your next visit where he could plug it into his computer and gather the information. For that reason, the included receiver will not need any type of Wi-Fi setup. And if that's you, go ahead and pause the video here as you walk through your language, time, date, and disclaimer prompts. When you hit this screen, go ahead and skip forward and you can meet back up with us at the application chapter. Now, if you're using a smartphone, know that Dexcom has provided some pretty easy to understand videos throughout your setup process. Now, we'll skip these in this video, but know that during the setup, you will need to watch each and every one of these to progress to the next part to eventually get to the end. Now, these videos do cover sensor readings, alerts, uh, when to use your BG meter, and there are safety statements as well within these videos and prompts. Okay, step two, setting up the app. Now, if you are a smartphone user, either Android or Apple, go over to your app store and download the Dexcom G7 app now. Allow for permissions, then choose if you want to log in using your phone via a text or using your credentials like an email or your username. Now that we've logged in, you will immediately be met with a disclaimer and don't be alarmed. Uh, you will see a few of these along the road, except all the terms here. Now it's going to identify your region. Uh, mine is the US and this is helpful because this allows the data to be read in either milligrams per deciliter or millimole per liter. Time for an overview. Oh, okay. Since I previously used the Dexcom G6, it's auto importing my previous glucose graph height, alert, and share settings, which is helpful. I don't want to do all that again, but don't worry. We could still tweak those later if you haven't done that yet. Okay. These next couple steps are the bread and butter and the meat. It's the whole meal of what you came for. So if you have a smartphone, go ahead and go into the settings and make sure that your Bluetooth is on. This will allow your phone to receive glucose data directly from your G7 sensor. Now, some smartphones like Apple's will do this through a prompt like this. Also, make sure to allow for notifications and this will allow your G7 app to inform you of important changes in your glucose. Now, the most important of these will be critical alerts. These occur when your glucose is urgently low or when your sensor fails to connect. If you do not enable critical alerts and your phone is on mute, you will fail to receive these notifications. Okay, it's application time. Step three, time to start the sensor. Now today we're going to select a location provided in the instructions. They have some pictures for you here. And uh, if you're an adult within the United States, find a nice flat spot on the back of your arm in the tricep area. Now, if you or your loved one is uh, ages two to six, you can also select somewhere in the upper buttocks as shown in this picture here as a site selection. Now a pro tip here is to select a site that is flat, but it's not too bony. One that's untattooed. I do have tattoos on my arms, so I try to avoid those areas 
or any area that has a scar on it, and preferably a spot that is less likely to be bumped or nudged while you're sleeping or exercising. Also try to consider what type of sleeper you are so as not to affect a good night's sleep. Now hopefully your hands are still clean. So now let's go ahead and open up an alcohol swab and rub the chosen site in a circular motion from the center outwards. This should dry within 20 to 30 seconds. If you wave your hand on it, it'll dry even faster. Now let's grab the pod and you'll notice that the top feels like a soft rubbery texture. This is going to help you with your grip. The bottom also has a few notches. This also helps with texture and grip. With both hands on the pod, go ahead and twist with enough pressure to break the seal, as you can see here, as I've broken on this pod previously. Now, once the top and the bottom have separated, you'll notice a couple things. Number one, the adhesive in the middle. And secondly, this clear plastic on the outside here. Now this is important because when you apply the pod, you're going to have to depress this plastic against your skin for the button to actually work. If I wanted to right now, I cannot depress this button no matter how hard I try. But the second I depress this, then press the button, it's going to go ahead and apply the sensor to my skin. Now let's press the pod securely against our site. And when you're ready, take a deep breath. Press the button. Not that bad, right? Now put the cap back on the applicator and put this device aside. Don't throw it away yet because we're going to need a number off of it. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that the adhesive is secure by rubbing it in a circular pattern three times onto our skin and then press the top of the sensor for about 10 seconds. Okay, now that we have the sensor in place, let's secure it with an overpatch. First, lay the overpatch on a flat location and peel both ends. Pick up the overpatch from one of the pointy ends and find yourself a mirror. Then carefully, and I mean carefully, place the center of the patch over the G7 sensor. Once you've applied it, use the same tab to remove the green plastic from the patch. Then again, use the circular pattern to make sure that it is good and tight on your body. Now try to keep the entire area clean for about 12-ish hours if possible, which might be impossible, but try. Hey, if you're a type one, type two, a Mahdi or a Lada, and information like this for diabetics is important to you, Make sure you subscribe to this channel and I will do my best to keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of diabetes. Okay, time to pair it all together. Now pick up your applicator and look for the four numbers on the side. It should look like this. If you're using the pairing code, simply add the numbers into the receiver that you have chosen and then hit next. Alternately, if you're using a smartphone, you can also have the option to use the phone's camera to scan the QR code that is also found near the numbers. The receiver will now attempt to locate the sensor. Now this is important because this handshake occurs via Bluetooth. You'll need to make sure that both the receiver and the applied sensor stay within three feet until the sensor is found. Once it's found, it's gonna do a warm up. It takes about 30 minutes. And when it's complete, you're ready to go and you'll see a glucose reading just like this. But wait, I found out a secret that might help you out in the future. I hope you don't need to use it, but if you do, here it is. Remember the Bluetooth triangle that I talked about earlier? Here it shows that the device can share Bluetooth to several devices at once. If you have an emergency and you have another phone or a receiver like the one that was included in the starter kit, simply set it up and continue using your G7 session like nothing ever happened. So I tested this out. After setting up the Dexcom G7 on just the receiver that I got with my starter kit, I then attempted to simultaneously connect it to my iPhone. 
even though I had an active session going and it worked. The crazy thing is, is that I went from one device to another mid session and when it picked up on the iPhone, it still knew the exact amount of days that I still had left on this active session. Now to take your G7 knowledge and experience to the next level, go ahead and watch these helpful videos. I'm Ben, I'm Type Me, and I'll see you next time.